So hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will present you like an overview about uh, what you, we done in a project, a big project. It's already archaeological maybe because it ends uh, 2017, so it's still it's like a very post uh, presentation. Uh, but uh, yeah, I continue working on that uh, besides other stuff, so probably it's a little bit of patchy. I, I done uh, at several moments more intense work on that, but I wanted to do this kind of overview. I think I believe it's useful. Uh, well, the main goal in this project, at least for our team, was to uh, ha explain the long use patterns in other environments, especially specifically. Uh, the idea was, well, you have a lot of different phenomena. Uh, you have uh, production uh, constraints, you have ecological constraints. You can you have also, of course, social uh, norms, uh, the kinship structure, all those little details, uh, all giving uh, us uh, a land use pattern. No? Uh, the other aspect, of course, is how you read the land use pattern archaeologically, but uh, for the time's sake, of course, we are here just talking about the land use as a, from a theoretical perspective. Uh, in archaeology, uh, it's quite, at, el at least we are working specifically in Central Asia, but uh, looking towards Eurasia, also maybe Afro-Arid Eurasia, so Northern Africa and, and Mediterranean. The idea is that you have uh, farming populations uh, could be only groups, could be whole societies, quite uh, uh, monolithic societies, if you want, like very limited. Uh, but also you have pastoralists. So pastoralists can be, uh, in that sense, uh, they can be fully integrated in, in those uh, farming societies, or they can be completely different, just visiting and coexisting in the same area. But the main idea here is that the same place is uh, actually useful for both activities, for both uh, groups or societies. And we can consider other uh, theories about, well, they are completely different, they use different spaces, they have completely different kind of use uh, of the land, so we can just uh, understand them separately. But here uh, I'm working with this hypothesis that they are actually overlapping uh, in uh, their niches. Uh, this perspective, of course, we started with uh, several questions, but uh, the main idea that, well, we, let's try to understand the relationship between people engaged in those two activities and if they are competitive or uh, cooperative. Uh, finally, we, we like conclude that this maybe is a bad question, and a uh, better question or good question will be through which mechanism and under which conditions, which is, uh, you can see my background here in uh, Asian-based modeling <laughs> and simulation, uh, made actually the, those stakeholders of the both of uh, those activities cooperate or, or, or compete. And of course, also how those processes reflect on land use and create land use patterns. We created uh, or projected a framework uh, containing several hypothetical mechanisms. So uh, some of them are well uh, documented in ethnography and historical uh, uh, documents, but of course they are uh, at the theoretical level here. Uh, it's quite big and was more like a projection. We didn't actually explore all of them up to now, but I believe at least in my <laughs> own uh, career and, and th those of my colleagues, I believe that we can do it in the long run. But of course, you have other constraints, especially computational constraints on, on those aspects. But the idea is to create an approach that is theory building. I, I know that this may be when uh, the word modeling uh, sounds more like uh, towards data. But here, I, I uh, probably from my background in social uh, sciences and, and, and try to, to make theory uh, on social things. Uh, I tried this approach uh, instead of a uh, data-driven approach. Uh, the first model that we created is a musical chairs model. Uh, 
uh, it was the core uh, mechanism that we, we could find that at least interested us. So is basically the competition between those two activities uh, for land use. Uh, we had a limited area, constant pressure, all of those it's were quite gener generic for any competition. So you have li limited resources and, and, and someone wanted to use them and another party that also wants to use them. Uh, the main results were, which is not surprising, but was interesting enough, is that the, there is a strong bimodality, so uh, you don't have ties. You have ties, but they are very temporary. And also, uh, because of our uh, design, of course, we have this uh, kind of asymmetric dynamics, because uh, that's why musical chairs is the idea that uh, farming stays on the chair and herds, uh, herders must uh, go on, around the chairs, if you want. So, of course, the farming has like a, a, a advantage only by being seated, no? during the, the whole year, for example. Uh, I didn't mention the presentation is online, so uh, here I have always like some references. You can you can enter it and, and check it. This the, the, that model is publicated uh, 2014, is uh, quite. Uh, long ago and also the model is available so if you want to, to, to check it. The second model we done, done is nice musical chairs model. The nice here is because we focus on the co cooperative because of the bimodality and the bias towards farming. We wanted to know if there was possible to have uh, scenarios producing the middle ground, no? Be producing actual patterns that uh, are not pure farming or per herd in the long run. Here we introduce a lot of mechanisms. Maybe I will not explain them here. You have more details in the long version of the presentation that is online. And <laughs> uh, But the main idea here is that the, you have already groups that are uh, possibly mixed. So you can combine stakeholders of both activities in the same group, group being uh, a social structure. Uh, that's it. So it's quite ab abstract. Pairing is a kind of exchange, uh, but exchange in terms of I increase the productivity of the other guy. You no, know? so you have farmers, for example, uh, uh, allowing herders herders to to graze on the on the fields in some periods of the day, of the year. So the dung can fertilize the fields, and of course this benefits also the herd. So this kind of exchange. Uh, we try to, to reflect here. Group management is the simple the idea that the, a group has a social structure that can maybe impose uh, a, a, a tendency towards land use. So, for example, a, a group wants to be more uh, invest more uh, in herd than farm, so they can like try to bend uh, individual stakeholders to, towards this kind of pattern. And then pasture tenure was the direct attack towards the bimodality. So we saw, well, if there is a asymmetry between the, the herders and the farmers, let's try to, to break that asymmetry, just uh, posting that, well, if herders behave like farmers, so they, they need to leave, but they just leave a sign in, this, in the seat saying, I'm here. Uh, farmers can still try to, to uh, take those those seats, but the idea is that only by sign uh, signaling uh, you can have more like a, a symmetric, no, not totally symmetric, but uh, quite symmetric. The results were more or less uh, without surprises, uh, with some exceptions, but uh, here we we saw emerging uh, a kind of trend that we we thought from the beginning, but we are not so sure that the fact that uh, herding uh, in groups, they tend to, to be more decentralized. So uh, a scenario where you have here on the, in the left hand of the, of the graphs, uh, you have more predominance of herding in, uh, in a place. So you have uh, more groups. Uh, this is uh, like the number of groups and the size of the groups is more or less the same idea that you have, uh, if a territory is predominantly herding, 
you have several groups, and if it's predominantly <laughs> farming, uh, only a few groups remain. So the main idea that the farming expansion uh, is facilitated and may fa maybe facilitates centralization. So there is a feedback there, but the, the main idea is that you can have both at the same time is, is, uh, is, is uh, more probable than the opposite. Uh, and also the fact that, well, you confirm that restricted access is a good approach for herders, if you, if you put yourself in the perspective of herders, to break the asymmetry. So you have here uh, a change from the bias to uh, the complete middle ground. So you have here almost the same chance of uh, uh, having herding or farming winning a uh, competitive situation. The last model, which you are uh, still also oh, <laughs> still unpublished, so I'm not uh, explaining much, but it's just uh, to so you have the idea where to, towards where this is going. Uh, we here introduce the spatial logistics. The other models doesn't really have spatial relationships because we're more interested in the in the proportions, uh, and also we introduce instead of group dynamics, alliance dynamics. So group dynamics is, you can imagine, it's like a clan. You cannot uh, actually uh, negotiate your affiliates to a clan. Uh, uh, but here, alliance is the more political one. So you can really you know, uh, negotiate uh, and join an alliance. Uh, and then past your tenure, we, we do a reinterpretation with more detail, uh, just because it was so important, the less results. Uh, well. I will go just through. Is this is a, a main idea of the distance? How distance affect the relationships in this model? You have centers of each group, so uh, you have this kind of relations between group uh, centers and uh, every patch, every part of the territory of the group. Oh, so and you have different behaviors. So the the chair metaphor here is the the. Uh, centers of farmers doesn't move and centers of herders do move every every year so they adapt to the new territory they have here we have a this is like a, a, a overview I'm not explaining everything but the how alliance uh, works in this model is quite complicated but this is not the most uh, computational uh, cost uh, costly aspect of this model is actually a very trivial thing which is uh, the most uh, delaying of the simulations for example uh, but uh, the main idea here is that you have well it's quite uh, intuitive I, I think you have a hierarchical structure you have some kind of tribute that circulates upwards and then you have some kind of influence that circulates downwards uh, and the important thing is that uh, alliance allows you to to protect these smaller units. So you can understand uh, the smaller units if they are preserved or if they are assimilated towards a, a bigger alliance which uh, connects directly to groups, for example. No? So you have this kind of different scenarios. Uh, and here is the reinterpretation of the pasture tenure. Instead of having just a sign and an absolute saying, this is mine, uh, we have like kind of more archaeological approach in saying, uh, the center of a herding group leaves something or modify the landscape in some way that communicates uh, ownership or, or at least a uh, kind of, uh, of property uh, related to this land, which is more, more diffuse because you also apply this kind of distance effect. So the, the longest uh, the territory, uh, the more marks you need to have to preserve them. Okay, the main, main results is surprise alliance doesn't make much difference, <laughs> which is uh, a kind of disappointment because the alliance was a kind uh, of, when you're modeling, you are expecting a lot of uh, uh, complexity emerging from that. But uh, in terms of land use, it doesn't really affect it. It does affect other stuff, so. Uh, but uh, which also is interesting is that the fact that if you have land tenure like absolute, you can have the result that we have in the other model, a very different result from the not having any kind of property. Uh, but here, since it's much more diffuse, you have 
I don't know if you notice, you have like 500 uh, simulation runs different. So it's, it is important, but it's not so important than the, the last model. So the main idea is that it still is quite by model and the middle is more or less populated, but is less uh, probable than the streams. So here's a, just a representation. Uh, the topography is very important from the cent of the centers, and we could control that uh, with the parameter that constrain the position of farming centers because they are the ones fixed. So the more constrained they are those centers, uh, the the easier are for for herding. So if farming is just in one very small area, herders can distribute more easily because they can move and then they just surround uh, the farming area. But if you have very diffuse, very less uh, loosey constraints on farming centers, uh, they will like populate all the area and herders will be like uh, smash between the areas of farming. You can, you, I have some images. Uh, also here's this main idea that we confirmed from the other model that uh, less centralization uh, tends to, to be herding territories. So we have, in here, you have more alliance or more groups uh, present than in farming uh, kind of uh, localities. So here, just uh, uh, overview for you see some simulations. In those cases, you can see the, how, the fact that they can move uh, actually is, is not an advantage in terms of in the long run in the competitive uh, aspect because they are just uh, corner in you know, uh, from the expansion of all the farming centers and also which is interesting that the, there is almost non uh, extinction of centers of herders so even though they can compete a lot they will not uh, eat this themselves you no know, the territory of the others while farming centers if you do concentrate them you you got that the you, the orange crosses here are extinct centers farming centers so they just lose all the territory to another normally another farming center which is uh, i believe a uh, quite interesting aspect of the spatial uh, relationships so in general here is uh it's a very long journey a lot of modeling <laughs> uh, at the end a little bit disappointed about the alliances aspect but the alliance as we do did uh, allow me to to see that the decentralization aspect of uh, a herding society if you want is uh, it has a very robust base in several aspects not only one because the second model for example doesn't have a space so it just the fact that they are moving and and leaving their territory and then coming back mm -hmm. and needed to compete with people people that are in the territory the, all the real year round uh, makes this happen. So less group pastoralists, no, more groups pastoralists, less groups, centralization. Normally one single group survive in most simulations or, or with all farming. So this is quite, uh, I think, a result that's quite robust. And well, also that the fact I, I saw that uh, reflected in several publications on pastoralists is the fact that uh, pastoralists do need to to like behave uh, uh, like proper private property uh, that pastures are from them and not uh, anyone else. So they can have communal uh, grazing areas, but the fact that that uh, grazing area is from one group or at least one alliance, no not for every, anyone, it's not open access. And that's it, sorry about the time. <laughs>